body to our city of Palatka, July 18, 2019, City Commission meeting. At this time, we're going to stand and have our invocation by Reverend Ted Stackpole, uh, Missionary Assemblies of God, U.S. Missions. And Reverend Stackpole, can you also lead us in the pledge? God, can't remove your caps at this time. Would you bow your heads with me in prayer? Dear Heavenly Father, you have all knowledge power, wisdom, and authority. And we thank you for the opportunity to live, worship, and work in the city of Palatka. I pray today for these commissioners and our mayor as they serve together to advance our community to becoming a better place. Lord, you know that we have challenges, but we believe that with you all things are possible. And I pray today for the citizens of Palatka that are struggling financially, struggling in their family, or facing housing issues. Would you intervene with hope, help, and healing? And I turn this prayer back to tonight's agenda to seek your wisdom and guidance. I thank you in advance for unity and discretion in every decision that we made and voted on. We want you to be exalted and acknowledged for all you do and who you are. Because you are God, the Father Almighty. And to God be the glory. In the name of Jesus I pray. Amen. 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 I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands. One nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Reverend Stackwell. Roll call, please. Mayor Hill. Here. Vice Mayor Brown. Present. Commissioner Borum. Present. Commissioner Campbell. Present. Commissioner McCaskill. Here. All members are present and accounted for, and do you have a form? Okay, has everyone had an opportunity to review the minutes? So Second. There's a motion on the floor to say it. All in favor, say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Moving on to public recognitions and presentations. Aye. First up today, So at this time, we're going to ask our special guest to come up. Everybody had a cupcake besides Commissioner Moore. <laughs> Can I get my AU All-Star to come forward at this time? Woo! 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 Coach, I'm going to ask you to come forward again and give a brief uh, synopsis of the season. If I can get all the coaches to come forward up here with me and join me. Here's Mike. We, well, who wants to come to Mike? He's a speaker. <laughs> <laughs> He's always our speaker. Well, uh, this is our AU All Stars. Uh, amazing group of boys come together from three rec teams uh, through the season. So, uh, you going to announce everybody? Yes, sir. All right, let's go. Let's start with, uh, we got Luke Griffiths. Mm -hmm. Woo -hoo. Woo -hoo. <laughs> Just raise your hand, it'll be fine. Peyton Cicero. Right. Bradley Anderson. Right. Gavin Scarlett. Right. Kaden Hacker. Right. Justin Sadler. Dustin Kaysen. Oh. Bryce Green. Oh, oh, Chandler Kaysen. Oh, <laughs> we got Bryce Green. We got Bradley Moore. Michael Moore. Cody Green. And Larry Wilkins. Obviously, we can't do it without all the coaches. We got uh, Dalton Moore, all right. head coach Luke Sadler, yes, coach James Green, and myself coming back. All right. Uh, the only thing we can say is uh, we did. We had a practice tournament in Palaka. Uh, we went undefeated. We looked invincible. Uh, then we uh, we did go to Jacksonville, and we got humbled quickly. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, but. It, it helped us grow stronger. We went to the state tournament. We went 5-0. and 
at the state tournament, and we did have some adversity. We overcame in the uh, semifinal game, and uh, the championship game was was uh, we 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 pretty much rolled that one. But <laughs> so it was uh, definitely a great experience for the boys. Um, it's a great group of boys. We only get together this group. We got together at T-ball. Came really close to T-ball. We actually uh, in T-ball the same crew pretty much. With, uh, with a couple of kids, we got fifth in the entire state of in T-ball. So, amazing group of boys, but that's, that's a Prolaca AG All-Stars. So, earlier today, we had an opportunity to have a, um, a reception where we had where we had pizza and cupcakes for the guys. Um, guys, also, for you, for those of one who have not received it yet, we've got cups and pins from the city of Prolaca for you outside. But we want to just take a break to take a picture and let you guys know once again just how proud we are of you and just how great of a job that you've done. And we appreciate you guys being ambassadors for the city of Palatka. And so, again, we want to thank you and thank your parents for the great job along with these coaches and all that they've done for you. Any words from the commission? Just keep up the great work, guys. We really appreciate all that you've done. And just, hey. Keep at it. I'm in the major leaguers. My speaker guy here. Everyone raise your hand. Yeah. Woo! Yes, we'd like to really congratulate these guys. They went out and put in the hard work, and they represented Palaka very well. So, again, we want to thank these guys for going out and representing. Thank you. Thank you. Exactly. You're to do great things. Absolutely. I'm super excited to see our fellows represent Palaka in such a way. Um, so just keep keep up the hard work, and just as hard as you work on the field, work that hard in school as well. That's right. We're going to take a quick break. We're going to take a picture with the commission for the newspaper. Um, so parents, if you want to take pictures with them, memorialize it, we're going to go ahead and do that right now. So All right. we'll, we'll stay in recess and take a quick picture. <coughs> All right, guys, step, slide up. Everybody step forward. Everybody, everybody shorter than Bodie's <laughs> moved up. Move up, move up. So everybody, everybody shorter than Bodie, moved up, move up. Right, so, Steve Lochner, interim planning director. Um, so, this triggers is, do you want to come up with me at this point? Also, Mr. Garner. You're the star of the show. <laughs> so for the last year, Steve Lochnick has been working as our interim planning director. Um, and more so than just being a contract employee here with the city of Palaka, um, he's become a part of this Palaka family. And he's become uh, a, a really good teammate as it relates to things that were in place in transition. Um, he has stepped up to the plate. A guy who we only expected to be around for about 20 hours a week <laughs> has become um, an integral part of all that we've done here. Uh, he's brought in some additional processes. Um, <coughs> and along the way, we've been able to um, work cohesively towards making Palaka a better place. And just as Ms. Brown always says, we're better together. And so he's had the, uh, the honor of becoming uh, the assistant county administrator for for Citrus County. And so, uh, you know, Steve, we're going to wish you well on your next endeavor. Uh, someone who's been a career administrator in government. And so we really appreciate the time that we've had here with you. We hope that you don't cry before you leave. <laughs> um, and we've got a plaque for you that reads, presented to Steve Lockman, Interim Planning Director, May 15, 2018 until July 24, 2019. With sincere appreciation for your dedicated public service to citizens, officials, and staff of the city of Palatka, Palatka City Commission, July 18, 2019. So we're going to present this to you and tell you we definitely appreciate you and congratulate you on your new job. I just want to say that Steve Locknick is a consummate professional. He brought a lot of knowledge to our team, and he was a great 
member of our team. We're going to miss you so much. When Steve came in, we'd been without a planner for several months. Uh, things were in a bit of a, a, a disorganized state. He actually brought our comp plan up to date, broke the damn loose on that. Uh, we're going to miss you so much. But uh, we, he's uh, led us to a, a pretty good replacement. So we're looking forward to working with him, too. But we are going to miss you, Steve. Thank you so much for your service. Well, Steve, I've only been here eight, uh, eight days to be around you, but I find you to be very professional, and I wish you best uh, in Sisters County, and thank you for what you did, because I think the first word I asked you, what, what condition did the comp plan in? And you said, it's approved. Thank you. <laughs> Updated and approved. I want to thank everybody here at Palatka. Uh, I came in here um, to have lunch with the city manager and ended up staying for 14 months. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I was, you know, between positions, so to say, and uh, thought this would be a couple of months, but uh, you know, I was in a comfortable position here. I was very happy doing what I was able to do here and, and accomplish some things. I actually uh, turned down a couple of uh, lesser offers for some other positions because I felt confident being here. And uh, it's worked out really well, and uh, I know I'm going to have my share of uh, challenges down at Citrus, but it's been great working here. I thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I want to say um, thank you for dedicating 14 years to the city. 14 months. <laughs> 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 you know, I want to say. <laughs> 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 14 months. <laughs> 14 uh, months to the city of Black, uh, and thank you for making yourself available anytime that I need you. served us very well here and uh, again it's going to be a big hole to fill when you leave there's going to be a big void so again we'd like to thank you for all you've done for Palatka and I know you're going to do well in your new endeavors. Congratulations. Thanks. We definitely appreciate you. Let's give another round of applause. share grant. South Historic District Stormwater Phase 2. Uh, Mr. Griffith, is Ms. Tucker here? We're, she's off. She's off. Yeah. So we're here. So, Mr. Toriano, the floor is all yours. Actually, would you like to start? I, I'll, I'll be glad to go. It's up to you. You're the one. <laughs> well, Mr. Mayor, members of the commission, uh, members of the audience, I am Jim Troiano, representing the St. John's River Water Management District. It's my honor again to be back in front of you. This is not my first time I've brought one of these uh, checks to you, and I hope it will not be the last, but again, it depends on the great projects that are presented, and we have a very competitive cost share process, and so this is our district-wide cost share process, and we looked at a lot of applications, and we're looking for the best, so to speak, our bang for our buck that can do the best for our environment here with our St. John's River and, and everything else that we have uh, locally with our water 
that we believe it's very important to direct our funds uh, at those resources. So on behalf of our governing board, our executive director, Dr. Ann Shortell, I appreciate everything that Jonathan, Andy, uh, everybody that came to our governing board meeting to uh, talk to our governing board members. It's a true teamwork, and it continues to be a teamwork. So on behalf of the district, I'd like to present to you this check in the amount of $1.5 million, and this is for your South Historic District Stormwater Phase 2. And Jonathan can certainly talk a little bit more about the project, but it goes back to good teamwork. We communicate well. We're on the phone with each other providing information, and we're all good neighbors. Yeah. But again, this was earned. This is nothing less than an earned um, check because it's a great project and it fit well in our matrix. So we look forward to other projects like this. So Mr. Mayor, um, if I may present this to you and the commission, and um, if anybody has any questions for Mr. Griffith about the project itself. Um, but this is phase two of, of uh, a continuing effort. So we're gonna let Mr. Griffith take it on behalf of oh, the city. Yeah. Of course, I'll keep it uh, short and simple. Uh, this is phase two of the stormwater improvements in the South Historic District. Uh, the project is bounded by Laurel Street, River Street, Dodge Street, and Short Grove or Hawkins Street. Uh, much needed funding. Thank you, sir. We're looking forward to finishing this up. Um, I'm not sure if the residents are going to be happy since we'll be in their neighborhood for another 180 days tearing up the roads, but uh, again, a very good project addressing non point source pollution in the St. John's River. So, thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. It allows us to complete our infrastructure on the, on the South Historic District. And so, again, thank you for the partnership, and we appreciate it. And we, and we just we, we just can't say enough to the district, to the directors, uh, for the for the partnership that you guys have had in helping us uh, correct infrastructure from 130 years ago. So again, thank you. Yes, sir. We're going to come down and round, take a picture of quick. Round of applause. 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 This is when you say money for <laughs> Yeah, money. Big money. You know, you know that. We, we so if you try to cash that, you just cheat and have some words with me. Sorry, we're good.
The next image is of the bloom um, right here in the Palatka area. All of these pictures were taken just earlier this year, a very early bloom in both April, May, and into early June. And this last picture is um, uh, more of the northernmost extent of the bloom in um, southern St. Johns County. Now, um, some of the most dramatic uh, impacts when we see a visible algae bloom like this is the perception of the community in terms of uh, uh, our waterway. Uh, you have less respect, less appreciation uh, for a waterway when you see visible pollution like this. And that kind of change in your perception of the importance of our waterways can, can dramatically change when people see um, algae outbreaks like this. But some of the other impacts are going to be obviously recreational. Um, there were both kayak trips and boat trips planned, um, as well as spring break. Uh, folks traveling into Lake George to visit Silver Glen Springs, um, sailing, all kinds of activities that now people are running directly through visible algae um, outbreaks. And so changing their ideas for recreation and tourism in the future based on having seen this algae bloom in our river, as well as impacts to tourism, and then ultimately um, a complete sort of uh, uh, impact on the ecosystem. These algae blooms are signs of um, a breakdown in, in our ecosystem at the very base level. The plankton vert to the fish, uh, to the aquatic grasses, and all the way through the water column. This particular algae bloom, um, uh, most commonly known as AFA, um, some unique characteristics of this algae bloom is that it is phosphorus driven. And what that means is that um, even more phosphorus in our water column has allowed this bloom to occur. Uh, it can rise to the top and fix nitrogen literally from the air. It can sink to the bottom and get nitrogen from sediment below. That means this algae bloom can travel throughout the water column in order to be able to survive. So even if you're not <coughs> seeing the algae bloom on the surface, it could still be throughout the water column moving throughout depending on where it needs to get its nitrogen. We've seen an increase in phosphorus recently, and we're attributing that to changes in uh, agricultural uh, uh, lands in our headwaters due to the use of sewage sludge and biosolids. Um, this is one of the new sources of phosphorus into our ecosystem, and one of the um, sources that I'll talk about um, throughout. The last thing I want to mention on this particular species is the last outbreak of AFA was seen in 2010, and it was um, linked to, uh, uh, it was also an early bloom and linked to um, uh, an unusual mortality event for dolphins. Um, so uh, wildlife biologists are on the lookout for that uh, this season because of this particular type of species again. I like to just run through some of the sources on these in our workshops because people always want to know <coughs> what's the source and then what are we going to do about it. Many of the sources, residential fertilizers and um, organic runoff. We talked about stormwater today, so obviously your stormwater fixes are going to help with um, some of these issues. Septic tanks, not just failing septic tanks, all septic tanks will allow uh, uh, nitrogen and, and nutrients um, to enter our water column, especially as waters rise and we continue to see more rain and storm events. Landscape saturation from reclaimed water. I, I mentioned the biosolids and sewage sludge being applied at even larger quantities in our headwaters. Um, as well as the stormwater, agriculture, and aquatic spraying. Now some of the solutions to these, I just like to sort of briefly run through those because they're varied. You know, there is no one solution to these things. It requires persistence um, uh, from all of the, the counties and communities along the waterway um, in order to get at the ultimate solutions. Um, to this, uh, obviously dealing with our human waste problem, um, funding and requiring uh, uh, monitoring um, and, and impacts from agriculture, waterway restoration remediation, fertilizer um, and irrigation restrictions could be huge for communities along the waterways that are seeing these blooms. If you don't have fertilizer ordinance restrictions on time of year, especially in summer months, that could be something that could impact um, uh, these blooms. And, and um, uh, additionally, um, uh, further solutions from some of our um, uh, agencies. I also, though, want to mention the decrease in submerged aquatic vegetation or just those grasses along our waterways. Due to Hurricane Irma, we're seeing fewer and fewer of these submerged aquatic plants. 
These plants in our waterways that fishermen are not seeing right now serve as filters and take up some of that nitrogen. So the fact that Lake George right now and much of Palatka is absent, this, these, this vegetation is allowing these blooms to grow um, even earlier and, and we think it in even larger um, degrees because of that. Um, the St. John's River Water Management District right now is doing a survey of where these grasses exist, but we know that we've seen dramatic declines. Um, some of the uh, uh, solutions to these issues that we're seeing, um, the Blue Green Algae Task Force that um, uh, Governor DeSantis just commissioned, they're primarily looking at blue green algae impacts to South Florida because the red tide was seen there. But we're seeing blue green algae right here in the St. Johns River. Um, uh, changes to Lake Okeechobee aren't going to impact our watershed, so we have to make sure that those statewide solutions are going to help North uh, Florida as well as South Florida. Um, more reporting of blooms. Almost all those images I just showed you guys were from folks right here in Palatka that sent us those pictures. But the more that you can report to the DEP when you're seeing those blooms, the more monitoring that's going to occur and the more the, the prevalence of this issue is going to be seen at a statewide level. So letting your people know if you see an algae bloom, go to the FDEP's website, report it, they can upload it, and you'll get more monitoring for these blooms in your area. And of course then testing to see if toxins are present. And then last, we really need to see water quality standards that will tell us in our communities, is it safe to boat, is it safe to fish, is it safe to swim in waterways when, um, uh, when we're seeing these algae blooms occur in different areas. Right now, the only warnings that are given out by the Department of Health say, if you see a visible algae bloom, you should stay away. But there's no, we don't have numeric standards that tell us when it reaches a certain point with a certain toxin, here are some of the activities that you, you know, must avoid or should avoid. Last, I just want to close with some upcoming events that you guys might be interested in. First, I mentioned the St. John's River Water Management District's um, uh, aerial survey of the submerged aquatic vegetation. When that data is finished, we'd like to have a town hall here in Palatka to, to um, show the status of the submerged aquatic vegetation and what we can do to help um, uh, with that information to bring some of that, that, those plants back because that's really what's going to help um, clean this river up. In addition, um, uh, uh, Representative Payne is working with Representative Renner to bring a St. John's River Caucus meeting here. It's going to be held in Palatka later this year so that state solutions for cleaning up our waterways can be addressed. That caucus meeting as details unfold. I'd like to let you guys know about it and hopefully get um, uh, some representation from here in Palatka into um, some of those conversations as well. St. John's Riverkeeper has participated in the Bartram Frolic, I know I wrote Bash, that is incorrect, the Bartram Frolic for the last three years here in Palatka, serving as the educational liaison for all of second grade um, Putnam County Public Schools so that they can come out to the river, in a lot of cases see the river for the first time and experience it, learn about food webs. Um, we are having our 20 year anniversary this year. Um, uh, our, our birthday party is going to be held at the St. John's River Center right across the road on December 8th. Um, uh, a low country boil. Um, we hope that you guys will come out and celebrate 20 years of St. John's River Keeper with us. And then last, we just received notice that um, a, a drawdown uh, for a public meeting about a drawdown of Rodman Pool later this year. If that does occur, then we plan to host um, boat trips and kayaking trips out there around the, the Rodman Pool to see those submerged springs um, uh, uh, resurface as they do. So um, we are in the community and um, looking forward to continuing to be a part of the community. And with that, if there are any questions um, for me, I'm happy to answer them. I'm so sorry, I went over time. Oh, <laughs> Thank you. I have a question. Um, there's a lot of local talk about the grass um, having dissipated because of spraying that's been occurring. And uh, can, can you address that at all? So um, we've heard that concern specifically from folks in Drayton Island. Uh, there was aquatic spraying of vegetation literally days before the first algae bloom um, uh, appeared. But we've talked with, with um, the Army Corps of Engineers and sprayers, and, and they have assured us that not only are they spraying even um, fewer quantities than regular, but that the bulk and the majority of the nutrients coming from this is um, uh, far exacerbated than, than what it is that they're applying through their spraying practice. 
So, um, you know, uh, a lot of different agencies have looked at that same exact issue and they all come up with the same um, result, which is that it's just such a minuscule amount um, compared to the nutrition, sorry, the, the nutrients we're seeing in the waterway. Um, that's from them, that's, that's not from us. Yeah, and I, I just wondered if you could comment, because it's a very popular topic among local fishermen. And it's very popular um, to be called on my phone every day to say, we're seeing spraying. Um, we have heard them say that they could potentially modify their spraying times for when there are active um, uh, algae blooms. Um, but, uh, you know, uh, ultimately controlling invasive species is their primary objective. Um, and so whatever they need to do to, to continue on that, that path is what their, um, what their goals are. How does this, does this react with hydro in this algae blooms or is, is hydro in the, in the St. John's River? We do have hydrilla in the St. John's, and that is um, a part of the um, uh, aquatic uh, invasive control that goes on. Um, but I, I don't know about how that interacts with the algae <coughs> in particular, or if there's any relationship there. Obviously, the more aquatic vegetation um, does help with um, uh, uh, when you see the algae bloom, because the, the more nutri nitrogen and, and nutrients that these plants can take up, sort of the better, at least for that you know, immediate time frame. More important though would be that submerged aquatic um, vegetation that's going to help with the natural, um, the natural channel. Any other questions? Thank you very much. Thank you all for having me tonight. I really appreciate Thank it. Sorry, I appreciate it. Thanks. Let's give a hand for the center. Next up is our public comments. Public comments will be limited to three minutes. No action will be taken on topics of discussion. If you're here to speak during public comment, please fill out a yellow card that's located in the back of the room so that we can have your information for the record. We have one speaker card for this evening, and that is Mr. Douglas Hayes, 216 Hilltop Road. I'm not sure where I'm supposed to stand. Right here. Just give your name and address for the record. Sure. My name is Douglas Hayes, candidate for County Commissioner District 3, live at 216 Hilltop Road, Satsuma. Um, I'm here to address the lack of revitalization. I've been in observation. There's a, a boom of activity the first time it was announced. It's been about a month, and of course I'm relying upon the local newspapers, so I haven't seen much activity, so I was curious to know was taking place with uh, the amount of money that was spent. Second thing was um, to exercise my credentials. I'm a master gardener and I specialize in native plants. My big is I rebuilt the garden of uh, the Fountain of Youth back in 2000. And I see where you did some landscape effort in downtown Palatka. And um, it was a cute idea, it really was. Uh, the drawback is it come with the cool weather because you planted roses, which are really nice, but they're, uh, they're a water consumer. Um, where they're located, you're going to run into uh, fungi and uh, mosses and stuff like that because of uh, the river environment. And then you, you also are invented with uh, crape myrtles. Crape myrtles also will moss up on you. So you uh, planted a legacy of, of maintenance and decay. What's really cool is uh, St. John's River Management and produces a book called Waterwise uh, using native plants that will fill the greenery that will be conducive to the environment so that perhaps we can set a trend and lead by example if instead of using store-bought plants is that we can go to our uh, native plant nurseries and make provision. Good list of uh, plants and use available through St. Ron's River Management. Uh, the other thing too is a full garden is a happy garden. Uh, the methodology is more for uh, there, you, you use chlorine grass which is really nice and you could have uh, ornamented with their gale of what variety of grass, but it's spotted. So what's going to happen is people are going to throw trash in the voids. You've got a lot of wood chips, and uh, that's room for weeds. Now you have continued maintenance. So what I recommend in the design is to really pack that with different types of grasses and native plants that are both evergreen. Uh, the next thing is that I came and spoke with you guys in regards to the revitalization that all the experts that have come have mentioned uh, 
basically the same thing is that you uh, have, have to have something offered, uh, know your target audience, have a brand, and advertise. Marketing 101. Um, I would like to make an offer or a suggestion in branding. Um, right now, your uh, slogan is, uh, it's our nature. You're a city. Um, there was a time, historically, we were the gem of the St. John's. And I'd like to re grasp that or make a suggestion of that because we are tours of Mecca. And if you look at the history of Placa and how we became the, the gem of the St. John's, that we could restore that energy, um, it might be really cool. Uh, the next thing is in this recommendation from the experts, the one loop that they left out is called search engine optimization. Today's day and age, the traveler, and remember, all roads lead to Disney. That we're trying to get something that's coming down the 95 corridor to take Highway 17 to avoid the congestion, come through, visit, enjoy what we have, spend some dollars, and perhaps uh, carry on, or discover our secret, come live with us. So anyway, that traveler has a smartphone, and they're going to look up Putnam County or Polacca and look at what you uh, have via the uh, search engine optimization. I recommend trying to uh, address that because right off the bat, third hit down is the Polacca lane and the description of it. And it's not too uh, conducive for our environment. Thank you for your time, and God bless. Thank you very much. We're going to refer you back to Jonathan Griffith in the back, who is the city's water portrait. Yes. He's also our public works director, so I, I, and he's got the, he's got the horticultural background, so I'm sure he'll understand more than we do when it relates to those the, the vegetation. But again, we want to thank you for your comments. Is there anyone else here for public comment at this time? Seeing no one, we'll close public comment. Moving forward to the consent agenda, we've got items A through K on the consent agenda. Is there any item on the consent agenda that you wish to have removed at this time? Seeing none, is there a motion? I'll make a motion to approve the consent agenda. Second. There's a motion on the floor and a second. Are any further discussion? Seeing none, questions called. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Moving on to item three. I'm sorry, item four. Public hearing 2019 trim calendar resolution setting the tentative millage rate for fiscal year 2019-2020. Budget year 6.4000 mills proposed. Resolution of the City Commission of the City of Palanca, Florida, adopting the tentative millage rate of 6.4000 mills for the levying of ad valorem taxes for the fiscal year 2019-20 and providing for an effective date. So moved. Second. Here's the motion on the floor in the second. We're not up on the floor for public hearing. Is there anyone here for public hearing? Seeing no one, we'll close public hearing. Is there any further discussion? Question. Questions called. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, motion carries unanimously. Moving on, item number five. Public hearing resolution setting a date for public hearing to consider adoption of the 2019 fire assessment rate to fund fire protection services with no change in the rate of assessment from 2018 rates and memorializing staff direction is for adoption. A resolution of the City Commission of Palatka, Florida, obtaining special assessments to fund fire protection services and facilities, providing direction and confirming the annual process necessary for the City Commission's consideration of the imposition and collection of special assessments to fund, in part, fire protection services and facilities and providing an effective day. So moved. Second. So much on the floor in a second. Is there anyone here for public hearing? Seeing no one, we'll close public hearing. Is there any further discussion? Questions. Questions call. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Moving on to item six, public hearing ordinance. 209 South Palm Avenue, Annex. Amend the future land use map and element from Putnam County U.S. Urban Services to City Commercial City CON and the rezone Putnam County Commercial to City Commercial C1 to, to PB Case 19 11, First Assembly of God, first reading. Item A. An ordinance of the City of Palatka, Florida, annexing into the corporate limits of the City of Palatka, Florida, certain adjacent territory identified as 209 South Palm Avenue, located in Section 12, Township 10 South. Range 26 East, 
public records of Putnam County, Florida, contiguous to the boundaries of the city of Palatka, and providing an effective date. And just for the record, second reading, and it's up for adoption. Is there a motion? So moved. A second. There's a motion on the floor and a second. Now we're going for public hearing. Is there anyone here for public hearing? Seeing no one, we'll close public hearing. Any? Yes. I have a question. Didn't the Supreme Court of Florida ask to find out a little something about non-profits and properties that we acquire? I think the question, one of the questions was whether they would be eligible for the tax exempt status on this property. Mr. Lockman actually did the research on that, and I'll go ahead and let him supply you with the answer. Mr. Mayor, Commissioner, the property already has the tax exempt status. It has already been in possession of the church, and they already, I guess, got that approved for the property. This annexation does not change the status of the property. The use of the property ultimately will guide whether or not it's tax exempt, and so long as it's related to the church activity, it would be tax exempt. They have not announced any other activity for this property at this time. Any further discussion? Seeing no questions called, all in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Moving on to item B, future land use map. Future land use amendment ordinance for adoption. An ordinance of the City of Palatka, Florida, providing that the future land use map of the adopted comprehensive plan be amended with respect to the following parcel of land, less than 10 acres in size, from Putnam County, U.S., Urban Service to CRN Commercial, 209 Palm Avenue, South Palm Avenue, located in Section 12, Township 10 South, Range 26 East, providing for severability and providing an effective date. So moved. Second. There's a motion on the floor by Commissioner Borum, a second by Commissioner McCaskill. We're now prepared for public hearing. Is there anyone here for public hearing? Seeing no one, we'll close public hearing. Is there any further discussion? Questions called, all in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Moving on to item C, rezoning ordinance, second reading for adoption. An ordinance of the City of Palatka, Florida, providing that the official zoning map of the City of Palatka, Florida, be amended from Putnam County C1 Commercial to City C1 General Commercial for the following property, 209 South Palm Avenue, Section 12, Township 10 South, Range 26 East, providing for severability and providing an effective date. So moved. There's a motion on the floor and a second. We're now prepared for public hearing. Is there anyone here for public hearing? Seeing no one, we'll close public hearing. Any further discussion? Questions? All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Moving on to item number 7, IT management systems update and cyber security. Mr. Hageman from Inspire Technology. So we discussed a number of different things and met with some of the administrative staff and Commissioner Borum. With Lake City and Fernandina Beach both getting some pretty serious viruses and having to pay in excess of $400,000 apiece to get all their data back, cyber security came up in a number of different discussions. So one of the many things that we're going to look at doing, we've talked about a few different avenues to secure some of the systems. So first things first, a lot of the infrastructure equipment that we've purchased, we're almost completely finished putting it all in. So the servers and all the networking equipment will be wrapped up at the end of next week. So we're making pretty good progress on that front. But from a social engineering standpoint, from a dealing with the end user standpoint, that's going to be the main focus for this next bout that we're talking about here. So a few different things. One of the big things that we're doing is security awareness training for all the users. That's going to be one of the big focuses. So I'll be going around to most of the offices kind of meeting with people and discussing different ways viruses come in, making sure you don't click malicious emails. We're going to do a few different routes of doing that, but we're also going to record all the videos and then we'll be able to show them to new people that come in from the city as well. So that'll be kind of a crash course of cyber security training for people coming in to work for the city. A few of the other things we're going to be looking at doing is upgrading some of the email filtering software that we have. We're actually going to do a test campaign that will send out fake emails that will act like a virus. And if people click it, then we will get notified and then we'll be able to give them a little more advanced training on 
what to look for for emails that could be potentially malicious. Um, in addition to that, there's a few other things we're looking at. Um, the big way to, uh, so if, if for some reason the hacker did get past all the antivirus and all, the, all this stuff that we're talking about, the big way to recover from this that most of the cities that have had this issue um, haven't been able to recover from is, is backups. Back up, backing up your data as a whole is good practice. I mean, it's pretty critical now in this day and age, but it also prevents us from having to you know, pay off a significant amount of money. So we're doing local backups right now. One of the critical things we've talked about in addition to doing local backups will be off-site backups. If for some reason a hurricane came through or anything else like that, we want to make sure that we're not just sending our backups across town. We want to ship them off-site off somewhere. So all that stuff will be encrypted. The people on the other side won't be able to access any of the data, but it will be safe. Peace of mind, honestly, for me, as well as y'all, when uh, if for some reason, you know, City Hall, Police Department, all of it gets wiped out. Um, so all of those are in the works. So we're still discussing options on, on the best avenue uh, forward with that stuff, but we will be looking at that probably in the next couple of weeks to uh, looking at getting it Any questions? Um, I just I appreciate them for updating and, and talking about the encryption piece, because if they do get the information in, if the information is encrypted, that's, that's key. Um, and then you're running it. Um, the filters on the exchange server, so that's a, a big piece. But when you run your um, the trial test or whatever, there's a, a company out there called No, no Before uh, in terms of um, for spam and um, phishing and different things of that nature. Uh, they can also help with setting up. Um, That's what we're planning on using. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, but, but I think appreciate you for the updates. Certainly appreciate it. Anybody else? <laughs> 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 he's, our, he's, our, he's our resident expert here. He's a commission expert, so we rely on. If, 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 if he approves it, we're happy. <laughs> so, do your legs, right? So again, thank you, uh, Mr. Hickman, for uh, for the update, All right. and uh, make sure Commissioner Borum agrees. Well, I just, <laughs> just happen to kind of know a little bit about it. So. <laughs> just, you just happen to have a couple of degrees in that area. Huh? <laughs> so we'll leave it to you. City Manager and Administrator reports. Mr. Griffin. Nothing, sir. Ms. Triggers. Nothing. Ms. Robinson. Chief. You're the only one here. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, just want to let you guys know I'll be out of town next week. Um, my family and I are traveling to a mission trip in Guatemala. No way. Um, yeah, we're leaving Saturday morning, so I just want to let all you guys know we'll be out of town next week. Um, also, yeah, got. I'm gonna have a bed down there that'll fit you. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, listen, the room we did this had a king size bed, so I'm hoping that translates somewhere around a queen here. So, <laughs> we'll, uh, we're gonna try it. So we're, we're looking real forward to doing that next week. Um, we also received a grant from Firehouse Subs, totaled eighteen thousand uh, dollars, 100 percent paid for. We applied for a grant when our guys came back from the. I think I told you guys before that we went to Camp Landing in the Cecil Field. So the one piece of equipment they couldn't deal without if we had to get deployed or had a hurricane situation or a natural disaster here was a side-by-side um, -side UTV. We applied for it and we received 100% uh, funding to buy one and we should have it in the next month or two. So, so, uh, Mr. Campbell's new parade ride. <laughs> so, uh, Let us know when you get it in. Yeah, it, it should be. Uh, I ran the paperwork past the uh, that Mr. Gardner and um, Ms. Becker just make sure the paperwork was good. We I submitted it today, so uh, mm -hmm. their foundation will be sending us a check in the mail. Oh, thank, so, thank you. Congratulations, thank and you. Uh, thank you. Again, thank you. Uh, congratulations on the mission work. Well, thank you. Mr. Thank Yule. Thank goodness, <laughs> <laughs> That's scary. We, we're glad not to have a report from you right now. <laughs> Mr. Lockman, your last report. Sure. I've got some. Uh, real quick, we got a application for a site plan for Captain D Seafood. Uh, given my short schedule, I had a real fast turnaround from Public Works, and uh, we got the comments out to them just about an hour ago. Uh, it's going to be across the street from the CVS and Publix on State Road 19. Oh, right. Where they are right. back in, in the same uh, area. Convenience store was. Back in the same area. Where the, where were the old car wash? Yeah, right there. Right there. They're coming back again. So, um, again, 
and we appreciate the expedited work before you leave. <laughs> <laughs> and so um, he said, "Come back here by your lunch." Mr. Garner, <laughs> he doesn't eat much. Oh, okay. That's you. The other Mr. Garner. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry, hold on. Hey, I've been reading too much. Mr. Holmes, you got anything? <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Garner, one more time. I've <laughs> been, been reading too much. I forgot what I was supposed to say. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I want to thank y'all for having the confidence to let me have the job on the temporary end of the basis. And I'm going to do everything I can to make sure that the collective continues to flourish because uh, like I told you all, I am very, very pleased with the organization and got uh, this budget process uh, after 35 years in city management. That, that, that's the most uh, easy way of doing a budget I have ever done, I've uh, been involved in. And I thank you, uh, all, everybody that was involved, and, and especially today when you see, I saw how you got to it by, you know, Laurel and Harley already uh, moved in there. That was, that was very great. But, but I'm glad to be here and I want to let everybody know uh, I have no boundaries uh, in, in, in uh, Alaska. I'm the city manager for everybody. <coughs> and my door is always open. Maybe a mouse got the ice push, but uh, they, uh, my, my door is always open and I'm here to, to be part of the uh, part of the community as long as I'm here. Thank you. You heard that, Ms. Kitchens? I heard that. I worked in the sleeve. All right, I figured. <laughs> yeah. Did, did Mr. Lockmaker or Mr. Brown want to talk about the, the, uh, the new, uh, the new Mr. Lockmaker coming in next week? Oh. Yeah, just a Mr. Mayor, I just wanted to announce that, uh, Former associate colleague of mine, uh, Dean Mims. He was a planner with the city of Gainesville for about 20 years. Uh, he just retired last year and had a part time position with Palaka. Looks really good to him. So he'll be starting here next week. Okay. Thank you. Uh, appreciate that. And again, oh. thank you. And again, thank you for your 14 years, about 14 months. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, Vice Mayor. I'd like to say they tell me you're getting a lifetime achievement award from your. Fraternity, and uh, I'd like to congratulate you. I'm sure the rest of us will. Yes. It's got an outstanding award because there's a whole lot of y'all going to make Appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, Commissioner Borum. Yeah, like, um, con congratulate the mayor on his uh, Lifetime Achievement Award. Mm -hmm. He's certainly uh, something well deserved. Uh, I'd like to thank the commission for the, the great job we do, the great job the staff does. And also, we got a great community, so um, just grateful and thankful to be um, serving in this capacity, and I enjoy every every moment of it. So, just like to thank everybody. That's all I have. Commissioner McCaskill. Well, I would say congratulations, but I'd rather for you to take me to New York. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you that. No, I'm just kidding. Congratulations <laughs> yeah. on your award. And Appreciate it. <laughs> I'm kind of like commissioner. Uh, I'm telling you. <laughs> you know, I'm an NBA baby. So. <laughs> but no, congratulations. Um, I've witnessed some of the hard work and dedication that you've yeah. put in, not only to the city, but in your profession as well. So it's definitely an honor. Um, commissioner Born said something about the commission. I want to commend the commission simply because um, when I came into my one on one, there are a lot of things that I wanted to bring forth you all had already brought forth. So it means that not only do we think about um, the betterment of this community, but we think about our staff and all of those things as well. And that's what we want to have. That represents the citizens of Palaka, people that really take themselves out of the equation and put the citizens first. So again, kudos to this commission for your hard work and dedication. And again, kudos to all of the department heads. Hopefully you can breathe a little bit now. And uh, Logan is not that gentle giant <laughs> that she is. I know the budget process is one that gives us all, makes us all cringe, but we've made it through so far. And again, thank you for your hard work and dedication. Um, again, thanks to the commission for, um, for all your kind words. Next week I will be in New York at the National Bar meeting um, receiving, uh, receiving an award from uh, 
from my fraternity, Omega Psi Phi Fraternity Incorporated. But more so than anything, I'm just excited about where we are moving forward again. Um, again, I think Commissioner Campbell, everybody said it. Our staff is second to none. Our, uh, our department heads, you guys are weathered the storm. Uh, we're moving forward. And, uh, you know, Ms. Becker, great job on this year's budget. Um, we didn't like you about a month ago, and now we actually like you. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, it's always, it's, but after a lot of long hours, it's like, I, you, you walk in that room and you're like, you walk in that room and you know you're going to hear no for everything that you want. And, but she found some magic way of putting it all together uh, so that we can move forward with visions, we can move forward with opportunity. And I think the most important thing that we have right now is giving our employees cohesiveness and proper working conditions more than anything else. Uh, the fire departments, got their, they've got two new engines, uh, which allow them and equipment that allows them to do stuff they need to do. Uh, Public Works has a significant amount of equipment, but, but the facility which they work in is substandard. The police department has a substandard facility that's aging in nature. Um, and City Hall is not receiving its highest and best use. And I, I think it's time that all those things come to a change. Um, you guys have a kind of a layout of what some of the wish list stuff was. And there was a schematic done by the architects for what was there, but this isn't the final drawing. So any input that you have, um, feel free to contact them and they will try to implement it as we move forward. But I think from a budget standpoint, um, we've got the high side of estimates on moving forward, uh, three departments as a whole, really six different funds. Um, and we got an opportunity to really, I think, take this city to the next level as we continue on with growth, the growth processes. There's a group of citizens in this community that are excited. Our new businesses are sprouting up all over the place on, on both sides of the river. Um, and there's still new energy. And I think um, if we continue to be a catalyst for change inside of this community, and we all live by Mrs. Brown's comments, and I know that's the buzzer for me, we live by Ms. Brown's comments, which is simply that we're better together. And I think as long as all of Palatka and Putnam County continues to work together for a better community, we will continue to have the advances that we have because there's no sector of this community that should be left out of the equation, and there's no sector of this community that should be treated better than any other. And I think that um, by making sure that we invest in those young people, like the ones that were here earlier today, we will ensure that the future for this community will be bright.